I'm Kelsey Josend, and this is my biotech video for the kitchen category on my project, A Deadly Disease, The Cure for Another, the connection between malaria and sickle cell anemia. For my video, I'm just going to have little clips of me teaching the lesson and then explanations for what I'm going to explain and do with the class in between those little segments so that it doesn't have to be as long as my lesson is. So my name is Kelsey, and my biotech project is teaching and it's about sure that everybody has a basic understanding of what they need to know to understand the lesson. So does everybody know what natural selection is? Yes. And mutations? Mm -hmm. And how, how recessive and dominant traits work? Yes. Okay, good. So to explain a little bit here, I'm going to talk about hemoglobin, which is the protein in the blood that carries oxygen. It's made up of six subunits, and that's coded for on chromosomes 6 and 11. And it's really complicated. If even one of those subunits is off, it can get really messed up. In the case of sickle cell anemia, it does. <laughs> does anybody know anything about sickle cell anemia? I've heard that it's a genetic disorder. Okay, anybody know what it's like if people have it? Okay. So sickle cell anemia is an inherited trait that is recessive, and it affects like 70,000 people in the U.S., and it can cause like debilitating pain and other things because it's in your blood, and so when your blood doesn't flow right, it can get clotted and have all kinds of bad things happen. It mostly affects people of African descent, but also like Mediterranean and other places like that. So to explain a little bit more about sickle cell anemia, it is an inherited disease, like I told the class, and it is a recessive trait, so you have to get it from both parents to have it. And if you're a carrier of sickle cell anemia, which means you have one copy of a sickle cell trait and one of a normal trait, you can pass it along, but you don't have the symptoms. You're basically healthy. Um, if you have sickle cell anemia, though, you have, you're going to get pain, organ damage, organ failure, anemia, that's sickle cell anemia, all the things that come with that, like fainting and things like that, and feeling weak, and even death. Um, so it's a very slight coding difference from regular healthy sickle, no, regular healthy blood cells. And when this coding difference happens, this, the cells sickle, which means they come out of shape. They're supposed to be round and instead of shaped like a sickle, um, which of course causes their function not right. They get stuck in the blood cells. And the important thing for my project with malaria is that they don't carry the malaria um, par parasite the same way a healthy cell would. The malaria can't reproduce in the, you can't use the cells. So does anybody have any ideas why an inherited condition that would be so bad could possibly evolve? Something even worse must have caused it. Mm -hmm. Any ideas that might be? Malaria? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so malaria is not an inherited but it also can affect your blood because the malaria parasite, which is transmitted from mosquitoes, has a major stage of its life cycle in human blood. And if there was anything out there that could keep you from getting malaria, it would be a good thing to have. So to give a little background on malaria, this is a disease that is given to humans when they're bitten by an infected mosquito from the Anopheles mosquito. There are four types of malaria. The kind that we're focusing on is falciparum malaria, which is the worst kind. Um, it's the most deadly. You can, there are 400 million people a year who get malaria every single year, and two to three million of them will die. Um, most of them will be young children. And it's, it's endemic to Africa, the Mediterranean, the Middle East, Southeast Asia, basically around the equator, and it's also in the Americas. The life cycle of the malaria parasite is that it, when it comes into your body, it goes to the liver and reproduces there, and then once it's reproduced, it bursts forth um, and commandeers red blood cells, taking them over. So sometimes then it will be there, and sometimes it will turn back into the reproducing kind and go to the liver and start over again within the host. But other times it will be picked up by another mosquito to go on to the next human um, from the red blood cells.
Because malaria kills so many people every year, there's obviously an evolutionary pressure to be born immune to it. Because what people do develop immunity, since most of the deaths occur in children under age 5, they don't have a chance to develop immunity. So people who are born with a mutation in, in their blood cells that can affect the life cycle of the malaria and interrupt it are really at an advantage. However, nothing would select for a trait that's going to eventually kill you, sickle cell anemia. What's selected for is sickle cell trait, not sickle cell disease, but sickle cell trait causes sickle cell disease. Um, it's when you have two copies of it that you get sick. What it's selected for is having one copy of it, because you don't get the sickness from sickle cell, and you don't get the sickness from malaria either. So this is one example of where you kind of, somebody has to lose. So since malaria is clearly a really terrible disease, something has to be done about it. But since ancient ancestors didn't know about basic prevention like mosquito nets or anything, evolution had to take over. And that was where sickle cell anemia came in. Because sickle cell anemia changed the shape of the blood cells, the malaria parasite couldn't reproduce in them. So the person was born immune instead of having to develop immunity and risking dying before they could do that. Scientists first discovered the connection between sickle cell anemia and malaria by noticing that the geographic distribution of the two overlapped a lot. They both pretty much go around the middle of the world. Um, since then, they've been able to find more scientific reasons for why they're together, looking at how it functions, the, how the, their life cycle of the malaria overlaps with the way that sickle cell anemia works in a human body, but they still don't know exactly how it works. So does anybody have any questions? Is sickle cell anemia treatable today? Well, they can do things to treat you once you have it, but they can't keep you from getting it because it's inherited. So if somebody who has sickle cell anemia is probably going to have a shorter lifespan. They probably won't be able to be very athletic because when they exercise, it gets worse, but they can live a pretty much normal life with basic treatments that are just kind of treating the symptoms. Why hasn't evolution taken its course to de-evolve sickle cell anemia? Because the treatments for malaria, preventative treatments for malaria are so recent, it hasn't they haven't had time. Evolution takes a long time to happen. And so probably selective pressures are working against it very slowly today, but it's not done yet. So in some distant future, maybe it will go away, but it hasn't yet. So in these countries where there's not really good treatment for either disease, you're at a super huge advantage if you have sickle cell trait, one copy of the disease, of the trait, and so is your marital partner. But your kids, if you're both carriers, have a 25% chance of being sick with the actual disease. So it's not good for them. But overall in a population, it is still selected for as long as malaria is a problem.